Namaskar. On behalf of Chandigarh Digital Academy, I, Harshali Chaudhary, additional district and sessions judge, come faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, welcome you all. In this session, we shall be taking up the latest judgment passed by Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Sukhdeep Singh Khera versus State of Punjab on Section 319 CRPC. Without further ado, let's look into the judgment. Now, the judgment is Sukhpal Singh Khera versus State of Punjab. This judgment was passed by a constitutional bench of five judges of Honorable Supreme Court of India. The relevant facts with regard to the judgment were that on 5th of March 2015, 11 accused were charged with offences under, under NDPS Act, Arms Act and IT Act. 10 accused were summoned and put to trial in Sessions case on September 6, 2015. Despite filing a second charge sheet, the police did not name the appellant as accused. Initially, during Sessions trial, witness did not mention the name of the appellant accused. However, the prosecution filed an application under Section 311 CRPC to recall PW4 and PW5 on 31st of July 2017. The recalled witnesses named the accused during cross-examination. Thereafter, the prosecution submitted an application on 21st of September 2017 in the Sessions case to call five more accused, including the appellate accused under Section 319 CRPC. Since the Sessions case was against 10 of 11 accused, it was split up and renumbered as Session Case Number 217 of 2019 on 3rd of September. On 21st of September 2017, Sessions Case Number 289 of 2015 was a loan pending case. The judge acquitted one of the 10 suspects and convicted and sentenced the other nine. On 31st of October 2017, the Sessions judge accepted the application under Section 319 CRPC and summoned the accused appellant to trial. The accused appellant disputed the order dated 31st uh, October 2017, uh, wide which he was summoned to face trial, contending that it was not granted in a matter existing before the Learned Sessions Court, as the conviction and sentence had already been passed on 31st of October 2017. However, Honorable High Court dismissed the revision petition of the accused, causing the accused to approach Honorable Supreme Court. The accused appellant appealed before Honorable Supreme Court against the order passed by Honorable High Court. The petition was heard before a bench of two Honorable Judges of Supreme Court on 10th of May 2019. In assigning the summoning order, the decisions in Shashikant Singh versus Tarkeshwar Singh and Hardeep Singh versus State of Punjab were noted. In this context, Two honorable judges of the court were of the opinion that the actual stage at which the trial is claimed to have been completed must be authoritatively examined since the power under Section 319 CRPC is extraordinary. In light of this, the substantial question of laws were raised for further consideration and were referred to Honorable the Chief Justice of India for constitution of an appropriate bench to consider them. Honorable the Chief Justice of India has formed five judges bench to consider the questions. The relevant provision which was involved in the present case was with regard to Section 319 CRPC, which provides for the powers to proceed against other persons appearing to be guilty of the offence. Now, the issues in hand before the Honorable Supreme Court were that whether the trial court has the power under Section 319 CRPC for summoning additional accused when the trial with respect to other co-accused has ended and the judgment of conviction rendered on the same date before pronouncing the summoning order, whether the trial court has the power under Section 319 CRPC for summoning additional accused when the trial in respect of certain other absconding accused whose presence is subsequently secured is ongoing or pending, having been bifurcated from the main trial, 
what are the guidelines that the competent court must follow while exercising power under section 319 CRPC? Now, on behalf of the accused appellant, it was argued that the trial had already concluded and judgment and sentence had been pronounced when the accused was summoned as an accused under Section 319 CRPC. It was argued that the order violates Section 319 CRPC and Hardeep Singh, which holds the power, must be exercised before judgment. It was also inconsistent with section 353 subsection 1 of CRPC which states that after perusal of the evidence the judgment is to be pronounced after trial therefore section 319 CRPC mandates that the power can be exercised only during trial and once trial is concluded and judgment is pronounced the court cannot exercise the power under section 319 at that stage it was also argued that when the trial is over and the case is sent for judgment, the court's power under Section 319 ends and it becomes functus officio. When the court acquits or convicts the accused, no process that began with the charge should remain outstanding. It was also argued that it is not a procedural breach but a substantive one as the power is limited by inquiry or trial. On behalf of Michael Scure, it was argued that before taking cognizance under Section 190 CRPC and after pronouncing judgment, the court has no power under Section 319 CRPC in the light of Hardeep Singh. The trial court does not have the power to summon additional accused when the trial of other accused has ended and judgment of conviction has been rendered on the same date. In Sessions trial, an accused might be acquitted by an order of the acquittal and if acquitted under section 232 or 235 CRPC, the proceeding ends. If the accused is convicted, the trial continues because he will be sentenced and can present evidence. When convicted, trial ends after sentencing. In this context, section 353 CRPC cannot be interpreted to mean that the trial ends after arguments are heard. Evidence introduced during inquiry or trial, including FIR, Section 161 and Section 164 statements, cannot be used under Section 319 CRPC. The evidence from a separate trial against another accused cannot be used in this case. In a bifurcated case, when there is a separate trial, if evidence comes on record against the accused who is not already an accused, he can be arraigned as an accused under Section 319 CRPC. When an extra accused is summoned, the court decides whether to charge and try them together. Section 319, subsection 4, CRPC requires a new trial for the newly added accused. In a combined trial, all the accused, including the existing ones, should face a new trial. Section 273, CRPC prohibits using previously recorded evidence against a new accused in a case there can be just one set of evidence against the existing accused. Therefore, previously recorded evidence isn't admissible against anyone, including the current accused. Fresh trials to be conducted. On behalf of State of Punjab, it was argued that Section 319 CRPC ensures no criminal goes free and proves actual culprit's guilt. In this context, courts can summon anyone suspected of committing a crime on trial, a restrictive understanding of this power would be unjust. Section 319, subsection 1 of CRPC explains that who can be added as accused that could be tried with other accused denotes the additional accused. The conclusion of the main trial during a revision or appeal of a Section 319 CRPC order won't render it ineffective. The court has summoned additional accused under Section 319 CRPC when the trial of other absconding accused is ongoing or pending. The trial of absconding accused is pending and new evidence requires the court to summon more accused. When a section 319 CRPC application is decided on the same day as a trial, the lower court is competent to use section 319 CRPC power. According to CRPC section 354, a conviction without a sentencing order is incomplete. On behalf of state of UP, it was argued that with regard to the power that could be exercised under section 319, it was submitted that the trial does not conclude with the pronouncement of the conviction since sentence is also a part of the judgment. After sentencing the court is functus officio, it is argued that the power can be utilized until the sentence is pronounced, at which point the judgment and trial are complete. On behalf of Union of India, 
it was argued that the power under section 319 of crpc can be invoked at any stage after the sentence is pronounced since the involvement of an accused may come to light at a later stage so for the legal background and the interpretation on the law is concerned it was observed by honorable supreme court that the looking at the objective as laid down in the 41st report of law commission observations made by honorable supreme court in the case of shashikant and in the case of hardeep singh wherein the power of the court under section 319 crpc had been upheld reiterated and it has been held that such power is available to be exercised at any time before the pronouncement of the judgment there is no conflict or diverse view in the said decisions Honorable Supreme Court also explained the connotation of the phrase could be tried together with the accused appearing in subsection one read with requirement in subsection four to section three one nine CRPC and understand the true purport of exercising the power as per the phrase before the pronouncement of the judgment. The case laws laid down in the case of Rama Narang versus Ramesh Narang and others, Yakub Abdul Razak Melman versus State of Maharashtra. Rajendra Singh was a state of UP and Manjeet Singh was a state of Haryana and others were also referred to. Now answering the questions as raised by Honorable Supreme Court in its constitution bench. The first question is whether the trial court has the power under section 319 of the CRPC for summoning additional accused when the trial with respect to other co-accused has ended and the judgment of conviction rendered on the same date before pronouncing the summoning order. It was answered that the power under section 319 of CRPC is to be invoked and exercised before the judgment of sentence when an accused is convicted. In event of acquittal, the power should be exercised before the order. In case of conviction, the summoning order must come before sentencing if the order is passed on the same day it will have to be assessed based on the facts and circumstances of each case if the summoning order is passed after acquittal or sentencing it will not be sustainable whether the trial court has the power under section 319 crpc for summoning additional accused when the trial in respect of certain other absconding accused whose presence is subsequently secured is ongoing or pending having been bifurcated from the main trial for that it was answered that the trial court has the power to summon additional accused when the trial is proceeded in respect of the absconding accused after securing his presence subject to the evidence recorded in the split up bifurcated trial pointing to the involvement of the accused sought to be summoned but the evidence recorded in the main concluded trial cannot be the basis of the summoning trial order if such power has not been exercised in the main trial till its conclusion. So what are the guidelines that the competent court must follow while exercising power under section 319 CRPC? For that it was held that if the competent court finds evidence or if application under section 319 of CRPC is filed regarding involvement of any other person in committing the offense based on evidence recorded at any stage in the trial before passing of the order on acquittal or sentence it shall pause the trial at that stage. The court shall thereupon first decide the need or otherwise to summon the additional accused and pass orders thereon. If the decision of the court is to exercise the power under section 319 CRPC and summon the accused, such summoning order shall be passed before proceeding further with the trial in the main case. If the summoning order of additional accused is passed depending on the stage at which it is passed the court shall apply its mind to the fact as to whether such summoned accused is to be tried along with the other accused or separately if the decision is for the joint trial the fresh trial shall be commenced only after securing the presence of the summoned accused if the decision is that the summoned accused can be tried separately on such order being made there will be no impediment for the court to continue and conclude the trial against the accused who are being proceeded with. If the proceeding paused as in clause one above is in a case where the accused who were tried are to be quitted and the decision is that the summoned accused can be tried afresh separately, there will be no impediment to pass the judgment of acquittal in the main case. If the power is invoked or exercised in the main trial till its conclusion and if, if there is a split up 
bifurcated case the power under section 319 crpc can be invoked or exercised only if there is evidence to that effect pointing to the involvement of the additional accused to the summoned in the split up trial if after arguments are heard and the case is reserved for judgment the occasion arises for the court to invoke and exercise the power under section 319 crpc the appropriate course for the court is to set it down for rehearing on setting it down for rehearing the above laid down procedure to decide about summoning holding of joint trial and otherwise shall be decided and proceeded with accordingly even in such a case at that stage the decision is to summon additional accused and hold a joint trial the trial shall be conducted of fresh and de novo proceedings be held if in that circumstances the decision is to hold a separate trial in case of a summoned accused as indicated earlier the main case may be decided by pronouncing the conviction and sentence and then proceed of fresh against summoned accused in the case of acquittal the order shall be passed to the effect that the main case and then proceed afresh against summoned accused now accordingly the reference was answered and the order were to be obtained from honorable the chief justice and the matter to be placed before the appropriate bench to take a decision on the factual aspects so this brings to an end to the session with regard to the the latest judgment by honorable supreme court on section 319 crpc till we meet again namaskar